Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the town board on April 29th, 2013. All supervisors are present. And let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've only got one issue on the uh, agenda tonight, and we're going to be talking about the water service plan. This was called so that we could craft a counter offer letter to the city of Waukesha regarding their latest offer letter to us. Who wants to start? The letter from September 18, 2012. We've got that as boilerplate, something to start with at least. If you want to start with that, add to it, take from it. <coughs> well, I guess I'll ask does everybody, everybody have that? Yes, it's in, it's in your packet. It should have been probably the last. The last piece is on the back of what they came together. So I guess, I mean, it's not my meeting, so people have questions, thoughts, things that they want to have included in the letter, any concern at all that what? needs to be considered before we start checking off boxes on the letter? I guess you want to start with what you don't want in the letter, in, in this existing piece, start taking out stuff first before we add, or how do you, I think that would be fine too. concern, Joe, was that the city was not going to tap shallow aquifer wells if they were to be successful in getting a Great Lakes diversion. That is my primary concern. Uh, if I can have a minute, I'll make a photocopy of this for everybody and hand it out. I prepared what I felt were important pieces to me with regard to the water service area. I can certainly read this, and if you all want a copy, what's the pleasure? Let's get a copy. We probably can. can you email it to? Yeah. And then she can uh, add or subtract from it. <coughs> to you. Uh, it says, this letter serves as a response to your proposal dated April 25th, 2013. That proposal asked us to consider the approval of a draft water service supply plan. To clarify, this request is different from previous actions and agreements between the City of Waukesha and the Town of Waukesha 
is not to be construed as any amendment or change to the agreement based on the November 8, 2012. The Town of Waukesha took action on January 24, 2013, and that action accepted the offer without alteration, including a limited area into the water service area map. For the purpose of this proposal, any reference to the City of Waukesha is extended to mean the Waukesha Water Utility or any agent thereof. This proposal is different from that agreement, and the Town of Waukesha understands that in order to implement the new water service supply plan, it would require that the area map would be altered once all approvals necessary have been achieved to implement full, uh, fully every facet of the water service supply plan. The primary requirements being that the City of Waukesha be approved for the diversion of all water needed within the plan from a diversion from Lake Michigan and using Oak Creek Water Utility as a supplier. The Town of Waukesha would accept the proposal <clears throat> dated April 25, 2013 under the following condition precedent. The City of Waukesha and the Town of Waukesha shall agree to a development agreement covering all territory currently constituted as the Town of Waukesha. This agreement shall be in effect for the duration of the water service supply plan. This agreement shall provide that the Town of Waukesha is the governing authority for all development unless otherwise, uh, unless otherwise authority is assigned by Wisconsin law to the county or state. The City of Waukesha and the Town of Waukesha shall be bound to a revenue sharing agreement. This agreement shall be in effect for the duration of the water service supply plan. The terms of that agreement shall allow the Town of Waukesha to receive a portion of the property tax bill consistent with the amount that would have been received, missing a word, would have been received for each subsequent year as long as the water supply service plan. This agreement shall cover all territory currently constituted as the Town of Waukesha. City of Waukesha shall agree to abandon all wells located in the land presently constituted as the Town of Waukesha for the duration of the Lake Michigan diversion as the water supply source. The City of Waukesha shall not seek any additional wells located in the land presently constituted as the Town of Waukesha for the duration of the Lake Michigan diversion as the water supply source. The City of Waukesha shall agree that neither the Town of Waukesha nor any of the property owners of the Town of Waukesha who are in the water service supply plan and who are not presently customers of the Waukesha Water Utility will be assessed any charges or costs until and unless they are connected to the municipal water system which much must provide water from Lake Michigan via the approved diversion. The same shall apply to charges and costs stemming from the required connection to the municipal sewer system. Item 6, the City of Waukesha shall agree that the Town of Waukesha will be able to choose between purchasing water through the City of Waukesha as a result of a successful diversion application on a wholesale, retail basis, or combination of both. If individual landowners seek water service direct from the Waukesha Water Utility, they will be limited to receive service as a retail customer only. The City of Waukesha shall agree to indemnify and otherwise exclude the Town of Waukesha as constituted from all development standards or conservation restrictions, including economic, social, transportation provisions of the Great Lakes Compact, Great Lakes Resources Agreement. Landowners that receive services from the Lake Michigan Diversion by the City of Waukesha will be subject to the conditions provided within the Great Lakes Compact for all conservation measures. The City of Waukesha shall confirm and provide in writing the amount of water allocated to the landowners of the Town of Waukesha. The amount so allocated shall be reserved strictly for use by the landowners of the Town of Waukesha. <coughs> The Town of Waukesha shall be bound by this proposal only after conditions precedent are fully approved by all parties and are actively enforced. Further, the Town of Waukesha enjoys the right to reconsider its willingness to be bound by this proposal should any change to the water service supply plan change once the Town of Waukesha has accepted that plan. The only thing that I still have out here that is a, a, a sticking point or a concern for me and I didn't have it this morning when I was working on this draft uh, is the permissibility of this as the plan. Um, in addition, reviewing this 58-page plan, you know, Bruce Baker provided to us a statement in writing that says that only sewer pack can author an official plan. Um, I talked with uh, Ken Yonker again today to confirm sewer pack has no plan for us to consider. Um, therefore, this is the only thing I can identify as a plan. 
uh, were not mentioned in it. Uh, this is an appendix to the city's uh, application for the Great Lakes water diversion. I'm not sure if the board is willing to say that this is an acceptable plan. Um, it, it's something to me that, you know, I think that we um, would need to have this reviewed and understand why isn't our name referenced in it from a legal perspective, what challenges that may present for us um, in not being in it, even though our land is included in it. And given the size of it, it would take some time for an attorney to review, and I feel that's something that the board should approve if they want somebody to review it. Um, I would support having uh, O'Cannon, uh, O'Neill and Cannon Holman to review that through Dean Lang or uh, staff attorney that he would appoint uh, at the same time that uh, he would be approving this letter. We may not have this particular piece back. If this was the letter that we would send, there's also two documents that would need to be created. Um, when John and I met with the city and Ed Henschel hints at that in his letter to us on April 25th when he talks about uh, you know, appreciating the spirit of intergovernmental cooperation and that the city would propose entering into negotiations with the town to provide certain services to the town on a cost-effective basis. Uh, I'm not trying to, to say to you that he's saying, heck yes, let's get into a development agreement and a revenue sharing agreement. Uh, it, it just speaks to the fact that there's a tone and tenor amongst the, the discussion at the table that we could sit down and address this um, concern. And I think that for my liking, putting a revenue sharing agreement and a development agreement in place allows us to look at the town and the city in a very different light than we've ever had the ability to do because we could work proactively and in a collaborative way to develop areas of the town that need water and need sewer for commercial development. Uh, as I've shared with some people, when Woodman's was looking for a home, uh, I tried to, I met with them and tried to find a spot in the town of Waukesha to build that facility. And, and we were just unable to locate a spot largely due to their needs for uh, sewer. Um, with a car wash and with oil change services, we really couldn't find a, a, a good spot. When you look at the 164 corridor, there's certainly, I feel, commercial development that um, could fit our land use plan um, and would want water and sewer. I wrote this with the spirit of that kind of uh, outlook where we could, instead of being worried about what goes in there and the need of water and sewer, we could sit down with a developer work up a plan, uh, put them on water and sewer through the city, they would annex into the city. There's no way, uh, I, I don't believe for a minute that the city would not seek those properties by way of annexation. Uh, the impact to the town then is what my primary focus turned to. And if we're able to still provide some services to that development, which we would be able to do by your EMT type services, um, we could earn our tax base revenue, so we would not adversely be impacted by our tax base being eroded by the desire or need for water. Um, we would also be able to protect our community's culture, um, both in feel and in shape and size, uh, by way of a development agreement, where we would have developers, just like they do now, come into our plan commission and our town board uh, to, to develop that land. The city would benefit by way of um, increased tax revenue on their part. Uh, the taxpayer would not be burdened by two tax bills, but rather one. Uh, just using simple math, if the city's tax bill rate was $10 per thousand, they would collect that $10 per thousand. If ours was $2 per thousand, we would simply retain our $2 per thousand, and the city would get the eight. They'd also get a user of water and sewer, uh, which would help 
offset some of the uh, revenue and costs that would make water available um, as, as an additional backup option uh, to residents if they were in need. Um, would, so, you suggest, would you suggest that it just come through us, the town, for any future development that it starts here, ends here, we approve it, we approve what we want, and then it gets annexed and we have a revenue sharing agreement? Yes. I, I think that, um, you know, what I've heard from residents is, you know, protect our water, protect our culture and community, and, and give us an option. Uh, I think this is in the spirit of what the city has said, hey, you know, we'd like to give you that option. And, uh, I think it, it really creates something that we can start with and, and make some inroads. Is this the way it's going to finish up? Probably not. Uh, but I think it's a, a good place to start. If any land gets annexed and is not developed, should we have that 20 years of taxes clause in there? Well, it, it, that development clause, I think, would mm -hmm. would stay in the in the plan um, and what I, and just because you, you weren't on the board at the time last year we undertook um, reviewing our uh, our building codes and our densities and, and things like that um, considering uh, something called plan unit, unit developments and looking at some of those things um, you know it, it's possible that some of the very properties that are seeking annexation for development today because of the, the water, these are, you can look at them from a bird's eye map. I think that some of those people, um, we may be able to look at that and say that community, that little subdivision, it would be consistent to allow those smaller densities in that area. We may be able to fully develop that here. Um, and, and again, I believe that the city would require that they get annexed. I, I don't believe that they would simply allow it to stay here, but we could have a a voice in how it's developed, the, the, again, the density piece, the, the structure, that kind of thing, um, and, and it can be a win for the city. We're taking on the planning costs, we're taking on uh, fire and EMS service, we already have that, um, so it's not like we're, we're really adding an additional burden to the town ledger, but we're protecting some of our revenues there um, by finding, a, a, I think, a win-win. What if what if it's not getting developed? What if it's just being like the Buzz Hardy land, where it's just, just getting transferred? I, I think if he, you know, the, the water service plan is a twenty-year plan. Uh, I think this kind of an agreement would mirror that plan, and as long as that plan is in effect, this would be in effect as well. And if a resident came and said, "Hey, now I want to develop," but I, I this agreement's been in place for five years. We've been receiving that tax revenue as a, a town resident, and now they're going to annex because they want water and they want to develop the subdivision. Uh, I think that that development would still come back to us just like it would today if they were developing in the town. I have a real simple question, Joe, and, and if it's in here, maybe you didn't see it, but is the predicate for your letter here that if the city were to agree to these conditions that the town would be all in? Is that the predicate for it? That would be my viewpoint. Okay. My vote would be if the city were to accept our, and then I think that's part of the, uh, whether we put that in here up front that, that we would amend our, or accept the plan. The, the plan, depending on what it looks like, I mean, we, we still, I would caution that we can't approve a plan because we don't know if this is the official plan. I, I tend to believe it is, uh, but we, I tried really hard to put my finger on that today from lots of people, and I, I just came up short of a full answer. So, yes, my personal view uh, would be that I would vote, if they accepted the terms, I would vote to insert the entire town into the water service area, based on this agreement because I think this is um, a, a true win-win for everybody. It, it really, I just really feel that way. Okay, and part of it is just following up 
on the, I think, and I don't think these are the important parts of it, but the first part of the letter there where you reference the agreement that exists between the city and the town, their position, and they've laid it out is clearly that the letter of November 8, 2012 from Ed Henschel, it was and maybe not clearly spelled out, but it was their understanding that that was based on the town going all in. Now, I think we can get beyond that, but they will clearly refute the fact that there is an agreement in place. I, I will agree with you 100 percent that okay. they will refute that, and you know I, I'm hopefully we can work this out because that you know when I when I talked to Dean Lang about that agreement as we talked a little bit on Thursday night, um, he he really assures me that we have that, that that fundamentally was an agreement. They made an offer, we accepted it, boom boom boom. We went back and forth, it, and. and I don't want to make that the heart of this because I think that that hurts the tone, but I also don't want to allow them to sneak one past the goalie while we're not looking. I understand that, but I don't think that that is the mountain to die on. I would agree with you. Okay. Joe, this is substantially a big chunk of the plan, but they, there are probably 20 other documents that go with this, um, all on the website. We could I kill a bunch of trees <laughs> yeah. it off, and, and but this is substantially it. This is basically yeah. a summary of, of what's all on there. And that's one of the problems that, that I have is, as Appendix D, it, it refers or infers to other documents because it's just an appendix. If we approve, a, if we say, we'll approve your plan today, we approve the plan, which includes lots of uh, additional options. One of the big ones that I don't like in this plan, as an example, is that it references that they will uh, be removed from the deep aquifer. Uh, my concern with that is we want them to get out of the shallow aquifer. This plan talks about the fact that the state of Illinois and a number of other communities in Wisconsin would like them completely out of the deep aquifer. And this was an issue that the prior board we dug into, Randy, you know, Mike, quite a bit in saying that uh, we even went to the DNR to get a letter about um, the redundancy factor. The city's got to have this backup system that if the <coughs> main line goes down, they can still fully meet the needs of their citizens on the god-awful worst day of the year. Um, so that's the redundancy plan. We went to the DNR to verify that they could gain access through that redundancy to their current high-capacity wells and not use the shallow wells. Um, this plan speaks opposite of that, that they would use the shallow wells and not the high capacity wells. And I, I think that that's, uh, uh, maybe that's a negotiable point for us. I mean, maybe that's something where the city says, hey, you know, we have pressure from outside the area to get out of the deep aquifer. And maybe that's an agreement we sit down and work out with them to say, okay, but can we limit it to redundancy? Can we limit it to volume of draws uh, on a given day? Um, what those trigger points are? Uh, I, I think that's a discussion that we're going to end up having. The, I think the DNR has already agreed that they can use their deep wells for their redundancy. So yes, that that was that agreement was from 2011. That was drafted in 2010. 2010 correct. The 2011. Um, where the DNR acquiesced and allowed them to use the deep aquifer rather than shallow aquifer wells for redundancy is, I think that answers that question. Well, it, except for the fact that, again, if you put your seal of approval on this plan, it says the opposite, and, and I would rather not take their word for it. Well, we've also got the protection that here saying we're not going to allow that, that they can't tap the shallow aquifer. Uh, that shallow that is correct, if, and that's one of the reasons that's in there to say that they will agree it, it does say, okay, you're going to have to, I don't know if they're going to redo this or what they're going to do with that. But. My understanding is there's a subsequent addendum someplace in there that addresses the, and I, I couldn't find it either. There's, <laughs> there's, like I said, there's got to be 20 documents in there. But that that's been addressed, that they're allowed to use the deep aquifer and they no longer need the shallow aquifer for the, I would agree. which for the redundancy, which leads me to believe that that's not going to be something that they're going to fight us on real hard. And the, 
the, the only pushback I have is, is, is not pushback on you, just the fact that we have, um, you know, the city closed on the Lathers property, they spent a half million dollars, um, what, seven months ago, to, to acquire that property. And I know why they're doing it. It's a plan B and it's a safety valve and, and I don't begrudge them that that was their, you know, right and all that. Um, I just think we need to take that into consideration and say, okay, you know, there's some protections we need to put uh, to make sure that we don't end up in a year, they start, well not a year, but three years, they start putting wells there. I'd rather not have that experience. Joe, if I could just jump in for a minute, and, and maybe this is a matter of memorializing, updating, but I got uh, from Dan Dupniak today a copy of the letter to him of September 18, 2011, uh, that was signed by Eric Ebersberger and Lee, B-O-U-S-H-O-M, not sure how to pronounce that, but from the DNR, and I, I mean, I'll just read the first two paragraphs of that and is you recall when Dan Dupniak was here in uh, May I believe or spring of 2011 uh, he indicated the and the words that they used at that time rather than back was redundancy their desire to keep in play those wells on the Lathers property for redundancy in case they got the Lake Michigan diversion and something were to happened with the pumps, the pipeline, the water, that quality, that they would have a second or redundant or backup source. And this letter is addressed to him of September 18th, which probably comes after that draft plan, and it's the subject is emergency backup wells, and it says, Dear Mr. Dupniak, we received your letter dated September 1st, 2011, requesting that the department clarify its position with respect to whether the city of Waukesha's existing deep aquifer wells may be used as an emergency backup water source in the event that the city's application for Great Lakes water is ultimately approved. And the second paragraph goes on to say the city may obtain a written extended well abandonment agreement to allow a normally unused or standby well to remain operational provided the city agrees to the requirements laid out in Chapter NR 810.22 Wisconsin Administrative Code. The existing NR 810.22 requirements include the following, and I won't uh, read that, but the very final uh, paragraph <coughs> says, provided the city can meet the NR 810.22 uh, requirements, we know of nothing that would prohibit the city from using its deep excuse me, using its existing deep aquifer wells as an emergency backup water supply. So I think that's the intention. I think that's a matter of good housekeeping to get that memorialized and put in place, but um, that document's been around for a year and a half. I think one thing we need to have in here is this is going to all be predicated on a successful implementation of the application as it's as it's submitted, so that they're not going to be at the way that it's submitted today, so that they're not so that there's no changes to it. And and I believe what I attempted to do, and, and again, it just. Maybe if we back up a half a second here. <coughs> Whatever we do tonight, we've got to send out to, I, I talked to Dean and John Gearinger this afternoon uh, about this and told them whatever we have, we'll, I'll email to them tonight. Uh, but that, that was really, to your answer, John, I, I was trying to summarize that in number nine, the town of Waukesha shall be bound by, bound by this proposal only after uh, conditions precedent are fully approved by all parties and are actively in force. Uh, and that, that's one through eight. Uh, the only one I, I don't have in here written, um, because I, to be quite honest, I was hopeful that I would have a plan to say, hey, here it is. Um, but as late as four o'clock, Ken Younger and I were talking, and the only plan that 
sewer pack has is a regional plan which does not break it down the way it needs to. He um, Ken was a bit perplexed at Bruce Baker's representation that sewer pack would have to approve a plan. Uh, he was just confused about that part, but I think that that comes from some of Bruce's experience at the DNR, you know, where they're used to getting something from somebody else who's given it a blessing. Uh, so, I, again, I think this letter is fine to send out, but we have to understand before we say we approve a plan, I think we need to have the plan in our hands every page and have the opportunity to um, read through it and perhaps make sure that any legal beagle questions that we may have uh, get addressed. Uh, I guess I've got another concern and I don't know whether there's a way to address this in the, the letter or not. I mean, I think these are noble goals and I basically support them, but I'm concerned we got, I see yet another um, annexation application request today. I mean, those are flying in on almost daily basis. Is there any way that we can um, appeal to have the consideration of those annexation requests uh, put on hold pending resolution to this? I mean, we are hemorrhaging land at an incredible rate, uh, and that's a deep, deep concern to me because otherwise we're kind of in a position of, uh, on some of this lock in the gate after the horses are gone. Last week, uh, on Monday the 22nd, I sent an email to Ed Henschel, City Administrator. Hello Ed, no doubt that some people got overly excited about the water access and ran to annex in an effort to provide protection to their concerns. My question is regarding the detachment process for any party interested in reversing that decision if the plan to get Lake Michigan water is successful and the town territory is completely inserted into the service area. What are your thoughts on the detachment process? I'm not as well versed on this as I am on others. I think there will be people that will be upset that they made a reactive choice and that they may like to hear about their option to undo that choice. I would support uh, your view, Brian, and I would say that although I did not want to put that in writing necessarily to address that with the city, um, I think it would be appropriate for us on behalf of those residents to make a request to the city that any annexation requests that have come through in the past 60 days from the date that we send the letter tomorrow, um, that those people be given a mulligan, if you will, uh, on that option, um, and, and that's a, a choice. They obviously don't have services yet, so they'd be eligible for detachment. Mm -hmm. It would just now become, does the city have the will to let somebody reverse that decision? A couple of things. And when did you send that? Monday the 22nd. I okay. don't have a response from him, so okay. I can't maybe share. Maybe one response, and maybe somebody else can help, but I believe the plan commission acted, please help me out, was it on the party property last week? Yes. So, I don't remember what night they met last week, plan commission, was that Tuesday? Tuesday night. So that train moved on, um, and as much as you don't want to put it in the letter, you've already put that in play at least to Henschel in terms of the email. I appreciate even seeing a copy of that, and be happy to somehow or I think that's an issue that ought to be addressed because otherwise, I mean, um, like I said, if this thing keeps marching on, uh, those requests are coming fast and furious, and that deeply concerns me. Well, I think if, if we're successful in putting something together that the city will accept, those are going to stop pretty fast. I don't think that's going to be an issue moving forward. Would you be offended, Joe, if we changed this last line to something very simple that a non-New York attorney could understand? Something like if the application for the Great Lakes diversion is approved as submitted? Sure. Add, it, add that language I'm in there. I'm happy to. 
th this was conversation. So, yeah, I mean, if that's, I don't have a problem with that if we, we made it more plain. Um, now, how do you want to word it? That way. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if the application, this is, this contract or this agreement is only in place if the application for Great Lakes Diversion is approved as submitted. Does anybody have any objections to that language? I have none. Are we going to bring in the uh, plan that our name is not mentioned yet? Well, there, there is no, regarding that, there is no, there is no community's name mentioned other than the city of Waukesha, and the city of Waukesha is mentioned because it's the city of Waukesha plan. I don't, I don't think I found, and maybe you did, did you find any other community mentioned in here? Um, Muskego and McGuanago mm -hmm. are mentioned in the, uh, in the section where they talk about the adverse impacts into the shallow aquifer, they mention that those two cities use that aquifer as their supply source, and they reference it in that way. Right, but I'm, I mean, as far as inclusion, certain other communities included in the water service area, I don't think there were any. I think they just looked at it as a as a region. At least that's what I took away from it, and that that's the understanding that I got from it. That's that's I because I asked that question, why aren't we mentioned? And they said nobody's mentioned. And then I looked through and couldn't find it. I mean, I, I highly doubt that there'll be some red herring in here that we would need to fish out. But I, I think uh, we have a duty to know that before we say, I will approve the plan. I don't, um, I don't pretend to know whether or not we're really holding up the application. Uh, I think that if there's a way for us to be all in, there's an agreement that can be hatched out of this. Um, the city is light years ahead of the process versus the current map that is there. Uh, just as an FYI, if they had to, if this is their application and they are going to submit it to the Great Lakes, well, it includes the entire land of the town of Waukesha in everything. So certainly it is shorter term for them to work out some type of an agreement with us, which is also this agreement. It's not just that they want to work out this agreement. They have to, by law, work out an agreement with us. It, it's required. Um, but it, it's a shorter road for them to work on the agreement than it is to start hiring engineers to redo this plan, I would suspect. So I think we have to be sensitive to their situation tomorrow, but I'd also like to be dutiful and maybe execute saying that the plan is approved until we ferret that out a little more. The only other suggestion that I would make is in those first couple of paragraphs, just my suggestion, I don't feel that strongly about it, but um, our insistence, insistence by the letter that there's an agreement between the city and the town um, I don't fully concur with that. They're going to take issue with that. And, and I don't see that there's much purpose to be served in trying to press that issue. That's my only comment at this point in time. I think the rest of it is constructive and forward-looking. I just don't think there's much to be accomplished by that. Maybe you can persuade me there is. but I'll try. See it. Oh. Uh, if we look at item two, which deals with the revenue sharing, we currently have in the offer from them a 20-year tax base. It is slightly different than what we're putting in here. The difference being that they will pay us 20-year tax base of what that property is worth today. So when an agricultural uh, piece of property of X acres moves over, we're getting agriculture rates for that. When it converts to a subdivision, it has a very different tax rate to it. Um, the current offer says that we will pay you 20 years based on its tax rate at the time of the annexation. This would say that the tax bill 
would simply be divided based on uh, a revenue agreement, which we can discuss whether or not we would take a mill rate calculation, which is just our land value divided by our property tax assessment equals a dollar value uh, per thousand, and calculate that out then on that particular parcel of land. And again, I, I don't want to scare people. We're not talking about both municipalities collecting a property tax bill. They would annex, the city would charge the tax, and then the, the money would sit on the counter and they would get some and we would get some and the property owner would not be paying any different amount. Um, so, so it's close to that. This does move them a little bit and I, I appreciate that it does, but I, I thought that way because I want to work proactively. I think we could really develop that into being something of let, high quality. Let me try it a little bit more simply. That was very okay. specific. My point is, is very simply: we are asserting there is an agreement between the city and town that is in place by virtue of this letter. No, uh, well, we would have to put it in place. But we'd be busy in the next two no, to three let me, weeks. We have to let me back up. <laughs> let me back up. For what this basically it keeps referring to the agreement between the city and the town. And all I'm saying is they'll take the point of view that there is no agreement between us. I don't think we should get into a an argument over that because we're basically trying to strike this thing clean. That's my only point, not the details. Of it. But if you want to leave it in there, hopefully they can look beyond that and look at the forward moving progress rather than getting into an argument as to where we have been. I don't feel that strong. I just don't think that's an issue getting into a discussion over. Okay. And hopefully they won't discuss it. Let's just move forward from it. We think there is, they think there isn't. Doesn't matter if we craft a new agreement. Agreed. Okay. okay. So where do we want to go? I mean if you're if everybody's happy with this as it's with the, the change, we can, the, the process at this point, uh, as I mentioned, I spoke to John Garner and Dean Lang this uh, afternoon. They understand that there'll be a hot and fast review that they'll need to do with this letter in the morning, uh, and then they will forward it back to us. Um, when they get it, we can decide, do we want to set something into place if there are any, I, I don't feel that there'd be any, uh, changes of substance, if there are changes of, of language or grammar, um, as long as it stayed with the same tone and tenor, we could get this here and ready for signature tomorrow. And then I guess the board can decide, uh, do we want to give the clerk the ability to present this to the chairman for signature after we've all had a chance to review the electronic draft, or do we all want to truck in here tomorrow and sign it so that it can get delivered to the city prior to close of business tomorrow, which I think is just a good idea in keeping with the spirit of discussion with that. I guess if, if basically the substance of this does not change significantly. Uh, I don't have any problem with the German signing this thing and getting you over there with dispatch type of thing. I mean, my schedule tomorrow is not going to allow me um, for completely unrestricted opportunities to meet or whatever that type of thing. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. And the only other thing that I would a little bit ask on this is, is it, is it implied in here that if they accept these conditions, we are all in, or does that need to be, um, does that need to be said? Well, I, I think it's, um, with regard to the approval of the water service supply plan, as I've indicated in the first paragraph, um, it, it does say that we are seeking to approve their water service supply plan. And as Dan Dupniak has provided the copy, it says that we would be all in. I, I, I'd be, I'm not opposed to inserting some language in there that, that puts that in black and white. I think it is implied that that, and, and it certainly was, I can say more than the spirit of the conversation that took place uh, with uh, John and myself at the city, was that this 
decision, unlike the January 24th decision, was an attempt to find a way to put us as an all-in community okay. with that. But uh, I, I want everybody to feel <clears throat> as good as I do about the document. Let's just add then, we, we can add as delineated by the sewer pack in 1999. Because that's that's what that that's what's in that plan is that delineation. I'm, so we've got uh, in number nine, you change the verbiage on number nine. To, well, we uh, actually she added a ten, but we can okay. we can change that. This agreement is in place is only in place if the Great Lakes Water Service Area is approved as submitted. So that's kind of redundant with number nine then. Yeah, I would agree. So we could probably take out number nine? Or do you want to add a little bit to it? We could, we could add to number nine. Um, so let me just word Smith. We could put after the, uh, um, once Town of Waukesha has accepted the plan, we could insert a simple line that says, um, only after now you, you can't really uh, um, drop it there I would drop it at the end of the statement and put you know it is the intention of the town at this time to approve the or to accept the service supply area as described within the Water supply service area plan. Oh, I, I was talking about getting primary care um, by this proposal only if the supply, only if it is approved as submitted. And then do that, and then she can read it back. So, found by this proposal only Right in that sentence, John, we can put and would then accept Exhibit 9 to represent the water <coughs> Exhibit 9 of the, I could get really crazy right here. We got time. <laughs> Shall be bound that starts number nine right here. Okay. Okay. So water service area is approved and take area out of the plan. So make that plan. Exhibit after that, comment exhibit nine. I would therefore accept. I would then accept. I would then accept exhibit nine of the water 
service supply area plan for the city of Waukesha as the water service area. <coughs> Alright, so then exhibit nine goes in after it goes up. Um, the next step, exhibit nine. Yeah. You have all that other stuff of the walk shawl water. Yeah. Alright, <laughs> all right, you gonna read that? You already read it. push print. Let me read that back. The town of Waukesha shall be bound by this proposal only if the Great Lakes Water Service Plan is approved as submitted. It is the intention of the town at this time to accept the service supply area described within the Water Supply Service Area Plan and would then accept Exhibit 9 of the Water Service Supply Area Plan for the City of Waukesha as the Water Service Area. The town of Waukesha shall be bound by this proposal only if the Great Lakes Water Service Plan is approved as submitted. Once the plan is approved in its entirety, it is the intention of the town at this time to accept the service supply area described within the Water Supply Service Area Plan and would then accept Exhibit 9 of the Water Service Supply Area Plan for the City of Waukesha as the Water Service Area. Before we um, close and walk out of here tonight, I'd just like to have a paper copy of the final thing when we rest our pens. And I think the, the other question and give Larry and Mike an opportunity to respond. I think the question was whether or not um, John would have the authorization to sign his letter and send it over tomorrow, assuming that the attorney doesn't make any changes of substance to it, I've indicated I am willing to do that. I think you guys ought to have an opportunity to speak to that. I, I, I personally, I mean, I would like to, I think it is appropriate for one of the clerks to email that out and because of quorum issues that each one of us would individually respond and say, yeah, I'm good. Go with it. Uh, I, I don't. D Lang is not going to rewrite this thing, um, you know. And, and then certainly, 
have John authorized to sign it. I just think that that's proven so that everybody is on record for saying that I know exactly what went over to the city, chapter, letter, verse, and comma. Um, just feels good. I appreciate your effort. I will. You can defer. I will wave <laughs> at this point in time because I'm not even sure I'm going to have, depending on what comes through tomorrow, I'm not even sure I'm going to have the opportunity to do that. So I will wave. If the rest of you want to reserve your right to do that, that's certainly your So then just by responding, we're agreeing to what have to respond to Jamie right. or Aaron or Molly. You could not. Whoever sends it to you, you have to send it back to them. Meeting yeah. law stuff, you can't write right. to us. And Brian, you're, you're verifying right now. You're good with it as long as there's no substantive changes made. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm just a control freak. So. Well, let's, uh, I think we should put that in the form of a motion then. I would agree. So I, I would make a motion that we forward this draft to Attorney Dean Lang for review and that, that document then come back to the clerk to be distributed to the town board and those members can respond back to the clerk as to their objection or approval of John Merrick, chairman for the town, being authorized to sign that and I think if you decided tonight to waive that review ability, that maybe you can drop an email to the clerk advising her of that so that she has a document that says so-and-so waived their right. And upon receiving the majority back, which would be three, you'd be authorized to sign it and send it. I'll second Discussion? Mike? Discussion? Normally I'm a pretty positive guy, but the city's going to get this letter and say, okay guys, nice try, but nothing to do with this, sorry. What boat are we in at that time? We're going back to January 24th? That's certainly a possibility that I say that. Um, and at that point, we're back to January 24th. We're back in the time machine. We have no implications or issues because of doing this that would affect anything other than that January 24th? In other words, by doing this, do we jeopardize something that's already in place? They're going to argue with that no matter what, Mike, because they're saying they don't have a, they're saying that there is no valid contract between mm -hmm. the town and the city. So regardless of what we do, they're going to argue that point. If, if we wanted... You know, we have this 20-year agreement based on the action taken on January 24th. The city has said that that's not an agreement. We've said it is. Um, there's properties that have been approved for annexation based on that agreement. We would have what I believe and Dean Lang believes to be the right to collect on that 20-year tax base. If you send the bill to the city, I am certain they will refuse to pay it. And then we have a decision to make, you know, uh, it'll just be a dogfight. That's not the spirit in which I hope we had. Um, but I, I think we still have a duty to protect that piece because even the DNR letter states that that January 24th is the approved water service area at this time and that our action to approve a plan, if the plan does not come to pass, they will revert back to the January 24th service area map as was approved and that will be the service area. Here's, here's the fundamental issue. If you take a look at your letters of September 18, 2012, which we initiated, and at the top of the second page, we wrote to the Mayor and Common Council and said, in addition to entering an, agree an agreement that will allow the city and town to jointly consider requests for annexation, the town of Waukesha will agree to be, quote, in, unquote, the, quote, water service area, unquote, and support your application for Lake Michigan water subject to the following. And there were, what, seven bullet point conditions there. 
their position will be, notwithstanding the exchanges of letters from uh, Dan Dukniak, I believe on October, I want to say 16th of 2012, and from Ed Henschel on November 8th, they were operating under the presumption in that negotiation that we were going to be all in. That will be their position while they, why they will argue that there is no agreement between the parties. But again, I don't think that's the mountain to die on at this point in time. Uh, the city and the town, I suppose, could spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to argue that minute point if we wanted, and the only thing that we'd accomplish out of it is the attorneys would walk away rich. So that's where that all begins. You have a first and a second. Any other discussion like this? All set. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Anybody opposed? <clears throat> Carries unanimously. And I move to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.